This is chapter 10.2, and it's going to be Taylor polynomials. Um, I'm going to combine 10.2 and 10.3 a little together because they uh, go hand in hand very well. Um, but Taylor polynomials are actually one of the most important things that are used a lot of mathematics and in computer science, and um, they actually are the way that calculators work. So at the end of the chapter, I'll show you how um, Taylor polynomials and Taylor series are good and essential for uh, in calculators. So uh, the first thing to kind of know about Taylor polynomials is we have to remind ourselves of what factorials are. And basically, um, if you remember factorial, so if you're taking statistics, uh, you'll recognize this exclamation point. So this exclamation point, the way that we say this is n factorial. So it, you don't say n very loud. That's the English uh, version of this fa exclamation point. But in mathematics, this, this means n factorial. And basically what n factorial basically does, it takes n, you start off with the number, and then you subtract 1 from it. And then you keep doing that, n minus 2. And multiplying all these three different numbers until you get to 3 times 2 times 1. So for example, if you wanted to figure out what 4 factorial was, you'll start off with the number 4, and then you'll just decrease to 3 then 2, and then times 1. So this is going to be equal to 24. Okay? So you just basically start off with a number, maybe 6, 6 factorial. So then you're going to start with 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay? And then you can put 6 factorial into your calculator, um, and then you're going to get 720. Okay? Um, so the factorial sign, uh, what you will see in your calculator, so if you have your calculator, um, you'll kind of see this factorial sign, then you'll see like this NCR and NPR, that's how you'll be able to kind of see uh, your factorial sign, you just, just got to press it once. So if you have the TI-36 uh, X-Pro, uh, you can easily just find your factorial sign and the calculator will do it. So factorials are used a lot in statistics, so if you want to know what the meaning of factorials are, it's not just because we wanted to just multiply in numbers in decreasing order, there actually is some relevance to this and it, it relates a lot with combinations. So, but I won't talk about the the relevance of factorials here, that's a different class. So um, one thing to kind of note is that zero factorial is equal to one, okay, by definition. Okay, so I'll just write here definition. Okay, so whenever you see zero factorial, that just equals one. Okay, now what is the whole purpose of these factorials and where are they going to appear? Um, well, the first thing to kind of uh, let me relate a different topic before we get to the factorials. And basically what we're going to do is that if you remember from a long time ago, maybe calc one, uh, we maybe have some sort of function. Okay, so we have a function that maybe looks like this, I don't know. And what we said in calculus one was that I can try to estimate uh, this function using a derivative. And the way that we do it is by finding the equation of a tangent line. So here is the tangent line. And basically what this says is that, let's say this is at x equals 0, we can choose values that are very, very close to 0 to try to estimate this function. This is also the same thing as differential. So if we change our values by a little bit, how much is the other thing going to change? So it's a little, um, it's basically kind of the same idea. And basically this is what we're going to be doing is that we're not just going to be looking at tangent lines, we're going to be looking at different polynomials. Can I maybe express this with the parabola or maybe with the cubic, okay? So um, what we're trying to do is that this tangent line, we're going to call it P1 of X, and we're going to try to approximate F sub X with P1 of X. Well, we know that from, um, from, a, um, from algebra that Y equals MX plus B, and here M is just a slope, and B in this case is just a Y intercept. Okay, so if we were looking for this tangent line, well, we know that this is just going to be y is equal to, well, m is just a derivative at 0 times x plus b. That's just a function at 0. Okay, so actually we can write this p1, I'm going to write p1 of x as y equals, let me write it as f of 0 
plus f prime of 0 times x. Okay, so this is what we're going to call the first degree Taylor polynomial. Now, there's a reason why we're calling it Taylor. Okay. Um, so now, first, before we get to the to the next step, let's just do a problem really quickly. So let's say we want to find the first Taylor polynomial at x equals zero for f of x equals e to the x. So I want to uh, make f of x e to the x look or approximate it using a polynomial, Taylor polynomial, okay? So what, since we want to find the first Taylor polynomial, well, that's just going to be f equals f0 plus f prime of 0 times x. So first we know that we have f of x is equal to e to the x. Well, we need to find its derivative. So let me take the derivative of e to the x. That's just going to be e to the x. And now what we're going to do is plug in 0. Well, if I plug in 0 in here, you're just going to get 1. If I plug in 0 into the derivative, I'm also going to get 1. So using this information, I know that y is equal to f of 0. In that case, it's equal to 1. Plus f prime of 0, that's just another 1 x. So basically, my first degree Taylor polynomial is going to be y equals 1 plus x. So what this is basically doing is that you have y equals e to the x. So e to the x looks something like this. And what you're doing is that you're trying to approximate this using a line, which is going to be this y equals 1x, 1 plus x. So you're trying to approximate this e to the x with this function. Obviously, this is going to be a really terrible way to kind of uh, look at it because you can see that if I get to bigger values of x, this isn't going to be the error is going to be really bad. Okay, so maybe can we try to approximate it with other different types of polynomials? Okay, so basically, what we're going to be doing is that we want so we want to approximate. different functions with a polynomial. Okay, so that's basically what we essentially want to do. So um, let's look at higher polynomials at x equals 0. So here's going to be higher polynomials. at x equals 0. And what this is going to be the goal with that we have a function f of x and we want to approximate it with a polynomial of n degree. Okay, so we're going to start off with a third degree polynomial. So this is kind of how it's going to look like. So we're going to start off with a polynomial. Okay, so because we want a third degree polynomial, that's just going to be a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3x cubed. Okay, so notice that we want to approximate whatever this function may be with this polynomial. Okay, this is third degree. And the reason why it's third degree is because you have to the third power. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is take its derivatives, and you'll see why we we're going to take its derivatives. So I'm going to take the first derivative. This is a constant, so it's going to go away, so we're left with a1 plus 2a2x plus 3a3x squared. Okay, so that's just a derivative of the top part. Okay, let me take the second derivative. That's going to be, this is now it's going to go away, so we're left with 2a2 plus, let me leave that 3 there. So 3, I move that over. I'm going to have times 2 a3x squared. No, oh, just x, not x squared. And now let's take the third derivative. So now this guy is going to go away, and all you're left with is 3 times 2. Let me move the 1 over, and you get a3. Okay. All right, so now what we're going to try to do 
is the following. So let's go ahead and plug in uh, plug x equals 0 into the polynomial. Well, if x equals 0, well, all of these guys are going to be equal to 0. So you're just going to be left with a 0. Okay, so p of 0 is equal to, whoops, it's not approximately, equals a 0. Plug in 0 into the other one, this guy and this guy is going to go away. So you're left with p prime of 0 is going to be equal to a 1. Then I'm going to plug in this to 0, okay, so then p double prime of 0 is going to be equal to 2a2, two two. okay. Then I'm going to plug in the third derivative, 0, I'm going to get, um, well, all you're just going to left, be left with is 3 times 2 times 1, a3, okay. Now remember that we are trying to approximate the function with the Taylor polynomial, so basically, if I have a function, then that means that f of 0 is equal to a0. f prime of 0 is equal to a1, because we know that these two guys are the same. f double prime of 0 equals 2a2. And then f triple prime of 0 is going to be equal to 3 times 2 times 1a3. Hmm. Okay. Well, notice that this guy is just basically 2 factorial a2. And this guy is 3 factorial a3. So you can see that there's a little bit of a pattern. So let me tell you what the pattern is in this case. So if you have a function that you're trying to approximate with an nth degree polynomial, then the, and this nth degree polynomial is going to be a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3x cubed, so on and so forth until you get to the a n x to the n. So we can try to take each of these constants. Well, we already know what these constants are because here are the constants. If I move this 2 factorial over, I can get what a2 is. If I move this 3 factorial over, I can know what this a3 is. So plugging that thing in, we get the following. So the nth degree polynomial is going to be equal to, this guy is just going to be f of 0 a1 is just going to be f prime of 0, x, because that's what that was equal to. A2, we just figured out that if I move this 2 factorial over, I get f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial, and then you're left with this x cubed. If I keep going, again, I get f to the third. I'm going to write 3 like that. The third derivative over 3 factorial, x to the, um, oh, that should be x squared. It should be an x squared. And this should be x cubed. And I keep going all the way until I get to the nth derivative. And this is going to be over n factorial x to the n. This is what we call a Taylor polynomial. This is an nth degree Taylor polynomial. So this formula is really important. You don't need to memorize it. I will give it for you to you on an exam. So this is how, what, what basically a Taylor polynomial is going to do. So you don't necessarily have to have a first degree Taylor polynomial. You can have many different degree Taylor polynomials. So in the next video, we are going to do a couple of examples.